I never have seen such a beautiful island inside the Arctic Circle in northern Norway. It's Norway's second biggest island. How is it possible not to have seen it? Senja, the fairy tale island with enchanting landscape, always changing and never gets boring. Join me on this exclusive road trip along the scenic route of Senja and discover places you have not seen before. This road takes part from Grillefjord in the west to the northern part Bottenheim. It's the most popular route if you travel from south to the north or north to south. You will encounter the from dangerous narrow tunnels to a scenic rock landscape along the coast side. Finally, I'm going to do a next road trip during the summertime. And the goal is today to go over to Senja. So now I'm at the gas station in Sigafjord which I can highly recommend as they have and provide service with fresh water. You can empty the toilet and grey water. Everything is packed and set. But unfortunately it's really cloudy, so I'm not sure if we're going to see the midnight sun. Maybe we have luck and it will clear up later in the evening or the next days. We will see. At least this is the last opportunity to see the midnight sun. The midnight sun will not disappear completely, but the sun will go under the horizon. That means during two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, the sun will disappear and come up again. So you will still be able to see the sun during midnight, if it's good conditions and the clouds are going to disappear. Even if we had the best summer I ever experienced in northern Norway, the weather is not looking good for this road trip. Driving along the east side of Andoya to get to the ferry in Andernes. The big surprise is yet to come. Good morning, it's uh, five minutes before eight o'clock in the morning and uh, the ferry in Andernes is completely full. All lanes, all four lanes are nearly full with cars. So it seems to be I will not manage to get on the ferry now. My plan was normally yesterday to arrive. It's a lot of tourists, it's the main season and we have only a small ferry. I will see how long I have to wait, otherwise I need to figure out some other routes or alternatives to do. I don't like to drive around as it's a really, really long way of driving, especially now from Andernes. From, uh, from Westerulen, where I live, it's about uh, six hours to drive around and it costs a lot of gasoline. So it, I figured out it was normally cheaper to take the ferry from Andernes. All the engines have started and the big surprise will come soon. Will I made it or will I not make it on the ferry? <laughs> I, I called the guy, the captain on the ferry and asked how many lanes they can uh, get or get on the ferry. And he told about three and a half. So maybe I'm lucky and will manage it to get on this ferry. Otherwise I have to wait until 1 p.m. later in the day. It's about five hours. <laughs> but in Andernes you can also do some stuff go to a cafe or have some decent lunch, explore the museum, which I can show you in a different video. So stay tuned on my channel to follow this up. It's moving, it's moving. Will I manage? Oh my God, standing in the wrong spot. I'm not sure if this ferry should be always the first choice as I park the cars only the few centimeters distance between each one and people pushing themselves between the smaller spaces without taking care if they might damage something. It's finally made it on the ferry and it's I had to wait for hours but it's okay as I have a tiny van so if I used the smallest spot possible here on the ferry. <laughs> I will see. But just have a look what the ferry can offer. If you have 
have been on the road for several hours, the ferry is a good opportunity to take a break for about two hours. You can enjoy the rugged landscape of the island on the ferry deck. If you're lucky, you may encounter whales, as they are sometimes in between those islands. So now Senja is only two hours and ten minutes away by the ferry. If you would drive around, it's about six hours. And then you might have a lot of traffic jam. Tourists driving really slow, 80 zones, blocking the road. So uh, yeah, if you explore on a chill way, you should definitely go for the ferry. It was a huge key of cars. Uh, it was really long. I think um, at least not everyone was getting on the ferry and now it will fill a complete ferry. So if some more people would come now, they wouldn't get on it. So at least if you go and travel to Senja, you need to calculate to get in time for the ferry you not intend to go, but you will take the next spot for the next ferry. So you have to plan at least uh, four or five hours to stand still for the ferry. I think this is the best tip I have for you. So if I am going back to Andoya, Andenes, I will do the same. So you just plan it in your trip and buy some stuff or make a decent meal inside your van and just take it easy. Or stay overnight. It's really nice, the grill fjord here and the clothes are low, surrounded by mountains and it's really stunning view. I went from the ferry in the opposite direction, so it's about six kilometers. It stands on the sign for a viewpoint. It's above a tunnel. We have to drive for continuing on the scenic road, but definitely it's a really great camp spot. I will put it in the guide so you can enjoy this perfect spot. If you have a bit spare time, just amazing from here. You also can do a lo local hike from here. And yeah, we will see if we will go on this hike, but first we will head to Segla. This is the must-seen spot on Senja. I'm standing here on the part on Senja where we had a really big troll, but unfortunately it burned down. So that's why it's closed. But they offer that you can have a free parking here on this nice spot and refill your water, but it's on own, own risk. I met two nice Americans on the ferry from Andenes to Grillefjord and they recommended to take a stop in Ham. So I used the opportunity to check it out and eat a decent lunch, the famous fish soup from Norway. First viewpoint I highly recommend it's Bergsporten where you can have a nice stop and take a lunch. As you see it's a really nice view over the fjord, fjord overlooking. Today it's a bit overcast and low clouds hanging around the mountains. It makes it special for time lapses.
it's not during the afternoon so it's a bit cloudy so you have to wait until you can take some pictures if people respect your space they will wait for you but you can do your pictures and the next will be your turn turn The journey continues to the second viewpoint, Tungneset. It's difficult to describe in words how beautiful this spot is. I can only imagine how stunning it might look during a sunset or even northern lights. The next stop on our scenic route on Senja is Tungneset. It's an architectural build, as you can see here. It's like walking towards the sea, or you can also say that you're walking on the sea, kind of. I had to wait a little bit as a, there was a bus with a lot of tourists and people always getting in the way of the camera. So <laughs> actually it's a long time. Normally you need to go early in the morning or late evening. So I'll just have a look now how the conditions are and see what I can do. You know what this sign means? It means if there is a lot of waves out of the sea, they will flush over here. You can also see the rocks are really flat and not sharp. So the water was washing it all away and make it really flat surface. So if you are some places in Norway and you see rocks like this, it's a good indication that you should be careful. At least if it's a lot of waves outside on the ocean. like to make easy van food, I can highly recommend you can buy these vegetables in the supermarket in Norway and it's about two euros for one bag and you get like 800 grams, it's a lot and then you can make a nice stew out of it with tomatoes or you can add some meat, so it depends what you like, your preferences, if you like more vegetarian or have meat in your food. <laughs> if you have a too small van you can use the side door to make food, as you see here, at least you can stand, don't need to bend over all the time. Well, here we are at the famous Ersfjord beach. It's really nice. I moved away from the big parking lot as it was really busy and completely lined up everything with cars and camper vans. And I would like to have a bit quiet. As you can see, I found actually my own beach. <laughs> So I'm quite lucky today. It's a low clouds, so you cannot see the mountain tops. So uh, this is I'm wondering about if it's possible to hike. Maybe you're lucky and you get above the clouds, or you're unlucky and everything will be covered. It's not so much wind tonight. Maybe it will disappear during the day or half. It will be there still. It would be nice. It's a bit more moody for ditch. And the other thing, since it cooled down, as you can see, I have more clothes on, on myself. There are no insects bothering me anymore. <laughs> it was so crazy when it was hot. All the biting flies were coming and the mosquitoes and trying to eat me up. I couldn't be anywhere for 30 seconds without being bothered about the insects. So maybe we're lucky and they are gone for good now or they will be back if it's getting warmer. So the weather forecast is looking a bit better. We'll clear up the next days, maybe a bit sunny. 
The midnight sun will disappear in about one or two days. So the sun will go under the horizon, but it will be like half past two or three o'clock a.m. in the morning. So that means you still be able to see the midnight sun. And the good thing, if you go in the end of the season of the midnight sun, the sun will be more yellow and red, so you have it more colorful. If you go in the middle of the season, the midnight sun, it's only bright. And it's kind of boring, I have to admit, since if it's only a bright sun, it's like during day. So it's not so special sunset mood, what you can get out of it. So if you travel to Norway, consider maybe to go more to the end of the midnight sun season. Especially, it's maybe a bit less tourists. As I can tell, as far from Senja, it's not busy as Lofoten, but there are quite a lot of camper vans and RVs here. But still a little bit more space, this I can indeed admit. It's another morning here at the Ersford beach. I have to admit, first I was feeling a bit strange about moving inside the van. So, so less space and not so comfortable as my house and at least a big bed. But you get used to it. To move all the time, all the stuff, it's even more important to have it clean and tidy all the time. If you live in such a small space. Sure, it would be much more better if it's a higher van and maybe more in width. So you can have a bed from one side to the other side. This is maybe I will try to get my hands on to make a new build. It must be the best solution and I can have my surfboard inside the van. So it's less chance that it can be stolen if you go on trips. <coughs> but it's a really nice, nice uh, travel away it's a really nice way to travel so um, now i feel a bit better about it <laughs> as you see you can if you find good spots you can wake up on nice nice places anyway after covid many people started to travel this way as i see on social media it was kind of exploding so maybe you're watching right now doing the same. Just write down below on the comments how you feel about it, what you think about it and let me know. I'm happy to hear about it. Just having a morning, morning coffee walk towards the beach. So far, Senja has been really nice and I can understand, understand fully why <clears throat> people like it so much. As you have the steep mountains nearby the road and the fjord. So it's kind of similar to Reine and Hamnoi in Lofoten. So it makes really scenic views. So that's probably why we have chosen the West part, northwest, and north to have it as a national tourist road. But you will see. Stay tuned to follow up for more shots in this episode. You will not regret it.
we just has been visited Mefio de Var, mostly in no Norwegian. If you have uh, Var in the end, it's it's a sign for old fishing village, located on uh, on uh, outside on the sea. And it has a big, uh, a lot of history, which I will come back to you. I just stopped here on the way to Mefiotiva. As you can see, Sagla from a different view. It's now covered in clouds. So the famous Sagla is over there. And there, I think there might be Heston. And this is an iconic mountain where we get the picture over there. And here you see it's going steep down. And it's, and it's really quiet here. Only the sound of nature and waves. The journey continues towards a tiny village called Fjordgard. And I have no words what is yet to come next. It made me speechless. I have waited now several days that the sky has to clear up. So now it's only partly cloudy. I'm I'm hoping to see the midnight sun. It's a bit early. It's still a lot of hours. The trail it should be only about one hour to hike. It depends on your condition. Some people manage it in 35 minutes as well. So in 60 minutes I made it up here to Heston. The box and the pole is over there. I just went here to get the better view of Segler. As you see, Segler is behind me. It's really amazing. Even in that other direction it looks beautiful. Oh my god, they have some crazy tunnels here. It's so small and narrow. My tip, you should drive slowly. I only drive 40 kilometers an hour, drive through them. There's a lot of traffic, bus or lorry coming. It's full stop. There's no way going forward, so you have to go backwards. And they're all... Um, missing parts of asphalt on the roads here so it's nearly end of the summer and they still not fixed it it's a big surprise <laughs> can you imagine all the cars passing by here for the scenic route it could be a big traffic jam i can imagine but here are really great views 
were great views along the road. Yeah, I'm standing now in the big swing, as you can see on the sign here. It's the road to Hüsöy. It's a house island called on English. You can see it down below there. It's a really great view. And it's kind of a similar road. Uh, maybe not similar, but like uh, Trollstegen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's have a look and check this island out. And I can tell you in I can tell you soon if it's worth it or not. So stay tuned to follow up. Hüsöy is definitely a visit worth, as this island is, um, is uh, outside located on a seascape, so it offers uh, great views along the coast here on Senja. And this island is also connected by breakwater, as you can see here next to me. This is the main road to get to the island. For many years ago they had only boats and this was the only opportunity, same like in Nixund, what I had in a different video, I can link it up there, up there in the corner. <laughs> Continuing the road from Husoy to Bottenham to the ferry port offers some scenic views along the mountain pass. Arriving at the ferry port you can see Qualoya which is connected by a bridge to Tromsø. Heading now back to the ferry from Senja Kirillefjord to Andernes. I have no idea what I will be expecting if I have to wait until tomorrow or the next, the next one, or if I will manage to take the upcoming ferry. I think it was at uh, three o'clock. Otherwise, I have to wait until uh, seven in the afternoon p.m. Yeah, just need to get there, and we will find out. We have some spare time here at the ferry port. Just go to the local imbis and you can buy fish and chips. So I will try how it is. And you will know in a minute. It has been fun to see something else and trying my van out for several weeks and living in it. I hope you could get a good expression what you can expect from the scenic route on Senja, where to stop and get some insights about Segla. Definitely the fish and chips are worth buying at the ferry port in Grillefjord. See you in the next video.